to the Aero Club Adel Orsi um, in the district of Varese in northern Italy. Uh, Varese is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, the town is rising from the eastern shore of the Lake Varese to the foothills uh, of the Italian Alps. We're approximately 40 kilometers from Milan, um, the fashion capital of the world. Varese is truly uh, a stunning venue uh, for the sixth sailplane Grand Prix. Uh, to our northwest, behind you, is uh, uh, the Italian Alps and the border of Switzerland. And behind me uh, is the town of Como and uh, the famous Lake Como. To find out more about what's happening this week, uh, we have Brian Spreckley uh, here, the event director. So Brian, uh, can you first tell us what we expect to see this week? Well, Sean, we've got um, 20 of the best pilots in the world here, the best Grand Prix pilots who've qualified this year. They will be competing every day with a race two to three hours in the afternoon. We will provide good coverage of this so you can watch the racing live any day when we are racing. Of course, we have to hope the weather is good for racing. The races will normally start round about 1.30, 2 o'clock. So you can find live racing on the internet, on the sgp.aero website from that time. Additionally, we will provide an insight into what the pilots are thinking, what they have to do, and what makes the difference between the winning pilots and the pilots who are not winning. And Brian, please tell us, what do you think the challenges will be for the competitors this week? Uh, well, there, there's two, two really big challenges here. A lot of the pilots are not familiar with flying here. So they're going to have to work it out. They're going to have to work out the best way to fly here, how to make, how to use the, the energy really efficiently. And the second challenge is they're going to have to work out the best tactics. Because gliding is a, or sailplane racing is a very tactical sport. And it requires a lot of thought, a lot of intelligence from the pilots. And in this sort of racing, the tactics can make a big difference, and so that's a big challenge for each of these pilots. And with 20 of the world's best pilots, who do you think will be on top at the end of the week? Uh -huh. That's a tricky question. We have the uh, last year's uh, world champion final, uh, sorry, world champion in sailplane Grand Prix racing in Didier House, and the second place last year was Sebastian Kawa, who was the previous champion. So it's pretty obvious these guys are favourites to win. But there are probably 10 pilots who can win. We've got a um, really good Italian strength strong team. We have Riccardo Briglidori and we have uh, Giorgio Galetto from Italy who know the area. Very good pilots, top world pilots. They will be strong challengers. Yeah? We have the, uh, we have, I have a note here, we have, um, oh, the French guys. We have the French guy, Mustique, uh, Christophe Rouche, yeah? He's quite a good guy in this sort of flying. He will be sharp. Romans from Czech Republic, he's also pretty sharp, yeah? He's, he's not going to be at the back. He's going to be trying to push out there in front. A bit of a dark horse is Werner, Werner Amann. He's a very quiet guy, but I think he will do very well in this competition. But it's unfair of me to leave out the others because there are more of the there are a lot more pilots who could be there at the end. Ask me again halfway through the week and we'll see how we're going with that. Thank you, that's great. What about the young pilots, the the, the first timers at this event? Well that's uh, that's uh, very interesting because we have uh, Rasmus from Denmark. He's new to this, he's a very young guy. He's obviously a very good pilot, and it will be interesting to see how he adapts to the racing and the tactics. We also have Maximilian from France, again a very young pilot. He doesn't have the depth of experience of the older guys, but he has the potential. He has the talent and he has the capability. We really hope those young guys can push some of these other guys much harder, and they will be near, at least near the top at the end of the week. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Brian. Now, I think um, we have uh, uh, Ricardo Brigladori with us. Uh, he's one of the uh, competitors in the Sailplane Grand Prix and a local pilot here from Italy. Welcome, Ricky. Thanks. And got a couple of questions for you. Um, I'll try and remember them rather than looking. Um, Ricky, uh, tell us about the conditions here in Varese. First of all, we are in a lucky place, beautiful place to fly. We have lakes, uh, we have big mountains. Uh, we have uh, several options to fly here. You fly flat, you fly pre-alps, mountains uh, above 1,500 meters, and then you fly the big mountains. 
Of course, the big mountains are difficult to reach this time of the year, but we can have some chance. If you have more than 2,000 meters here, you can jump inside. Usually, is a typical place where you fly thermal condition, not really a typical ridge soaring flying, because uh, the only chance to fly the ridge is when you have strong wind from north. So you have to turn on the uh, right si side of the of the ridge to fly to fly the ridge on dynamic flight. But I'm sure that 90% of the cases you will fly mixed between flat and uh, little ridge, waiting for the right thermals. Not too low because 90% of the cases you must be over the ridge. If not, you will be in trouble. Okay, yeah. that sounds I good. I have a question for you, Ricky. Um, maybe you could just tell us how high were the ridges the guys will be flying in most of the time in the task area? Uh, I think just over the top of the ridge, few times under the ridge, but you must be in the right position to catch the, the, the good thermos. At this time of, of the year, the thermos are really narrow, so I don't believe we will need to fly full of water. 51, maybe it will be too much. But the, but the mountains themselves, here, the mountains near to Calcinati are 1,000 meters about? 1,000 above ground. Okay. Yes. And, I and mean, in the pre Alps, how high do they get? Um, I mean, these are the pre Alps, the first line, so we will fly approximately at 1,000 meters. If you jump 25 kilometers more in the north, you will need to, fl to fly you will need to have a cloud base more than 2,000 meters. If not, the mountains are into the clouds. And so it will be not really a safe flight, in my opinion. One last question from me. Uh, are there any specific routes that you would follow uh, each day? Uh, I mean, of course, it depends from the weather. The west side, it will be practical if we will have slow flow from northwest. Uh, so we will have drier air mass and high cloud base because we need to cross the lake, the big lake, and you will need to have 1,800 meters at minimum to cross that. So mostly I expected to fly in the pre-Alps to the east and you have a very fair competition until uh, Garda Lake. And you just need to have 1,200 meters, you can have a fair competition, nice, full of options, a little bit on the flat, a little bit on the ridge, a little bit more into the Alps, it depends from the moment. Thank you very much indeed, and con uh, good luck for the competition, and we look forward to talking to you later. Thanks a lot. So hopefully this has given you a flavour of what to expect here in Varese. Uh, today is our first day, and uh, the grid is lined up behind us, and we'll be doing a grid walk each day, and we'll have live commentary uh, from 1, 1.30 uh, each day if we're going to be flying. Thank you very much.